welcome back to the channel guys it is me ad summer for four so today guys i wanted to take a moment minute to remember i wanted to take a moment with you guys to remember the europa league guys what a europa league season this was you know from start to finish for 2020 2023 edition and i wanted to you know go ahead and review this so like i said uh, I want you let you let I want you guys to let me know your ratings for this Europa League as well. We're gonna go through everything. We're gonna talk about the the final. We're talking about teams that underperform, teams that underperform, team of the season, some stats, some numbers, and some fun quiz. So like I said, it's gonna be a long video. So just be aware, be prepared that um you know I put time in the description below for your convenience. So you know like for example, if you can't view all of this in one city, you're more than welcome to you know uh, skip around the parts you've already watched, or if you're gonna you know. Um, take a break. You just want to watch only specific parts. You can also do that as well. So, like I said, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Let's go ahead and get started with the final. So, for me, this final, for me, it was an interesting final because you could t clearly tell that Sevilla were the better team. I think for the course of 90 minutes, they were the better team. However, I do think Sevilla, Roma in particular, probably had the better chances. And I look in that um, Spinazzola chance they had, then obviously that chance they had right at the end, Chris Smalling, then obviously the chance they had in the 70th minute, I think that was a great play there. Bono made a very good save and made a last-ditch clearance there. You know, my issue with my issue with Roma, though, is that it almost felt like, yes, they had the better chances, but, like, the team wasn't great. And you saw the depth they brought in. When you have the likes of Belotti, and then when you have the likes of, you know, these other players, they just didn't step up, you know? And my issue with Roma was that Tammy Abraham and Dybella weren't fully fit, and they had to come off both injured. And um, you could clearly tell there was a huge gap in quality. But there's a reason why I don't rate Belotti. You know, for Sevilla, man, um, you have to give them a lot of credit because they were in a losing position. This is their cup of competition, and they brought on substitutions like Suso, who changed the game for Sevilla. And you saw his presence made the game a lot worse for Roma. And Roma couldn't handle him, you know. And I got to give credit to Roma defensively. Roma defensively were very good. They were limited Sevilla to only putting crosses into the box. And for Roma in particular, it was actually a great game plan. It's just that they just, I just, I feel like for Roma, they just couldn't handle the intensity that Sevilla brought, you know. And you could tell Sevilla just had that desire in them. They were trying to push, push, push. And you know, you can see how much intensity they were putting in. And I just don't think Roma was able to handle the intensity that Sevilla brought, you know. And so it was a very end-to-end -end final. When it came to penalties, I knew Romo for sure was going to lose. Like, we were just discussing the day before in the preview that Bono is a very good penalty shot stopper, and I would bank him to save those penalties. And, you know, and it just, like, shows, you know, and obviously when you take off your best players like Pellegrini, Dybella, and obviously um, um, Tammy Abraham, you're not going to win on penalties. It's as simple as that, you know. And so, yeah, man, it's a, it was an interesting final. Like I said, you guys want more details on the final itself, you guys can check the live stream. And check the YouTube short. This is more of like a, just a brief overview. Just give my quick thoughts, you know, and what was a very, uh, um, uh, what was a very, um, in, uh, her what was a very heritage final. I'm trying to find the right words because I don't want to say a very good final, but yeah, I, I think this was a football heritage final. So, you know, very, very interesting there. And then, yeah. So, yeah, congratulations to VM and congrats to them. Okay, now let's go talk about, um, the best games. There were a lot of best games in this season's Europa League. I think. Um, for me, the standard ones are as follows, and I'll explain these in a bit. I have some honorable mentions as well, by the way. So for me, Ferenbache 3, Rennes 3. This was insane. Like, the fact that I believe, and I'm mistaken, Ferenbache were 3-0 down, I think. And the fact they made that crazy comeback, especially at home. And this was so vital for them to top the group was insane. You know, it was in interesting. It was a crazy, crazy game on the group stage. Amazing game. Next up is Roma 4, Feyenoord 1. This was an amazing game as well. I really, really did enjoy this game because you just never know what's going to happen. When Roma score, you're thinking, okay, it's on, done, right? The Feyenoord score, and they're like, the 82nd minute is like, yeah, it's done. 2 on aggregate. And then, will you believe it? Tammy, I'm sorry, not Tammy, I'm sorry. Paula Dybella comes off the bench and scores in the 89th minute. And you're thinking to yourself, oh my god, what a finish. And then Roma scored two goals in extra time. It was a crazy, crazy game. End to end game. I really liked it. On next to Barca 2, Man United 2. I thought the first leg was very, very good from a neutral point of view. You had a goal fest. And, um, you know, it was just a very end to end game. So I really thought that was a good one. Then Union Berlin 3, Union SG. That was an amazing game. Um, I thought that was a very, very crazy game. Uh, a lot of quality goals in that game. And then for me, this one might come as a surprise. I don't think a lot of people would expect this one. But for me, I would put Sevilla 2, Juventus 1. Just because I. It was so crazy. Like. 
the game could have gone either way. And that's just the thing. That, for me, was such a nerve-wracking game. I was I was on the edge of my seat just watching that, how it unfolds. So, like I said, I think um, your, um, the Europa League website, they did a poll on this. So, you know what? We can actually show you guys that. Um, obviously, I'm going to be very, very careful here because, you know, copyright stuff. So, let me go ahead and click the... Let me just make sure that there's no copy. All right. Um, so, let me go ahead and open the Europa League website. Um... I'll pull it up for you guys here. So just give me a few seconds. Um, okay, sorry. Um, let me minimize this. Um, and here we go. Okay, so I'm not gonna. I'm only gonna play the top part because there's like um, videos there. So I'm just gonna look at this. So hopefully, I don't get copyright for this. Um, I shouldn't. So this is as you guys can see right here. Um, this is how it um, pans out. So. These are some of the games that they mentioned. So, Omnia 2, Man United 3 was an honorable mention. Union SG 3, Braga 3, that was another good one. A, Kalonica 3, Dynamo Kiev 3, Man United 2, Barca 1. I thought the first leg was better, so I'm not going to, I don't know why they put the second leg. Arsenal 1, Sporting 1, Roma 4, Final 1, and Sevilla 3, Man United. No, I don't know how that game gets in there, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. I'll leave, you guys, I'll leave a link in the description below, guys. You can just search the Europa League website here. So, I'm not going to go through the entire thing because there's, like, videos and I don't want to show copyright. So, you know, we're just going to just leave it at that. Now, we'll come back to the site later, okay, guys? Okay, so now let's go ahead and get back to where we were. So, um, yeah, okay? So, most people picked the Fair Budget 3, Rents 3. Okay, next up is best goals. Best goals, guys. There were a lot of great goals in the Europa League this season. So, I picked five, guys. You guys can let me know your picks in the comments below. I, I put down Suso goal versus Juventus. I thought that was an amazing, amazing goal. You know, especially the timing, especially being him being a Milan player as well. It must have felt so good for him. So, yeah, I would have I put that one there. Di Maria goal versus Nantes was amazing. That was a great goal. Gonzalo's goal versus Arsenal. Ward's goal versus Union SG. And then Anthony goal versus Real Betis. You could put the Juranovic free kick as well. I think against, um, was like, I think, you, um, Union SG. Um, you can maybe put the um, Rafinha goal against um, Man United. You can maybe put... Um, Anthony Gold versus Barca, you can maybe put... There's some other honorable mentions. Uh, like I said, though, we're not going to go through every single one. So, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you have any disagreements. Um, these are the teams that flopped. Let's go look at the teams that flopped. I picked down three. There, You could pick more for me. First up is Man United. I think Man United flopped. I feel like for me, especially given how Manchester United were one of the favorites for this competition... And the fact that they bowed out at this stage against Sevilla, a team, you know, because up until this point, we have to put things in perspective. They were owning La Liga teams. They destroyed Barca. Well, not destroyed, but they beat Barca. They comfortably beat Batiste. And they managed to beat Sociedad. Yes, it didn't result in top in the group, but they still beat them, right? You know, and you were looking at themselves like Sevilla were just in complete disarray. You know, they were just coming off of, you know, two managers and it was just looking bad for Sevilla. And the first leg was brilliant. You know, they were 2-0 up and everything. And then they screwed up, you know, in the stoppage time. And then in the second leg. Yes, I understand they had injuries. I understand Lissandro Martinez couldn't play. I understand Veron couldn't play. But still, that is no excuse to be destroyed by Sevilla like that. You still had your really strong attack. So, I really don't want to hear the excuses here, okay? You know, and it's just, yeah, for me, man, United just looked horrible that second leg game. They were horrendous, man. They were outplayed completely and so many mistakes, man. And all the lot like I said, all those goals were avoidable. It wasn't like Sevilla scored. I mean, okay, maybe the second goal you can say. But most of those goals, as I said, were just terrible defending there. So for me, you gotta put Manchester United. Then for me, next up is Olympiacos. I mean, this team flopped really bad. They finished bottom of a Europa League group, and I believe they were the part one team for that group as well. And the fact that they finished bottom is a disgrace in itself. I even got stick for saying that they would finish bottom of their group and my Europa League video. People commented out, and I was proved correct. I was proven correct. And it just shows, guys, that I saw this coming. You know, I was not convinced with them in the qualifiers, and it just showed how they flopped a big stage. So, yeah, for me, embarrassing. Lazio, for me, another example. They were in a very doable group with Michelin and Feyenoord and Stromgras, and you finished third? Okay, I can understand second, but third? Oh, man, that is disgraceful. And they went to the conference league, and they even flopped there as well. We'll, we'll do a conference league video soon, but I'm not going to put them in there because I'm already putting them here. But, yeah, they flopped in the Europa League, man. They flopped. Some other dishonorable mentions you can maybe put is Arsenal. You can put as a dishonorable mention, although I think it's a bit harsh since they went all in for the Premier League, but you could also put them in there. 
You could also perhaps put um, um, you could maybe perhaps put Dynamo Kiev, which I think is kind of harsh. You can maybe put um, I'm trying to think of some other teams. Mm. Uh, maybe you could put, um, um, Barcelona in some ways. You could also put as a disarmable mention. But, like I said, we came down from the Champions League, so. I, I would say it was probably more for the Champions League than rather than the Europa League. So, yeah, you could put some other teams there, but, um, those are the teams I came up with. Overperform. These teams overperform massively. Union SG. I mean, no one expected Union SG to be in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Especially at that very difficult group with Union Berlin and Braga. They performed admirably. And they got to the quarterfinals. And yes, they got destroyed by Leverkusen. But they put up a very good fight. They got a draw on the first leg away. It's just the home game was disastrous. But you have to give them credit. They, ama they amazed a lot of people. I, in, in fact, um, I did a Europa League review predictions video. And, um... Yeah, my Union SG take wasn't particularly great in the group stage. So, I, I you know, it, it, it <laughs> they overperformed massively. Let me just put it this way. So, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't even have high expectations for them. Michelin, another team that overperformed. They were in a group that many of us thought that they had no chance to get out of. You know, many of us didn't even think they would get top two in the group. And the fact that they came second place in a group ahead of Lazio is a very commendable achievement. And I, you got to give them full props. They deserve it, man. They deserve it. They were fantastic. Um, and yeah, they got the job done, you know, props to them, man, props to them, and while they didn't make it to the, um, what is it called, um, oh, round of 16, um, they still put up a great fight against Sporting, and they managed to get a draw away, so, you know, like I said, you just have to give them that, um, and then obviously, Ferenc Varus, Ferenc Varus, for me, they did a fantastic job of, um, you know, uh, topping the group, and, um, you know, and they, they, um, went to the round of 16, you know, and while they did get beat by Leverkusen, they still put up a very good fight. And like I said, they were in a very different group with Monaco, Cervantes, Zvezda, and um, I believe it's Tra Travensport. Yeah, Travensport. So they did very well. So you got to give them props for that. Okay, next up. So I'm going to read you guys all these stats, um, all these key numbers. I thought it was interesting. I wanted to put from the Europa League website, but once again, guys, you know the copyright thing. So I'm going to try to read it for you guys. This is really hard to read, so bear with me here, guys. So, um, yeah. So, um, numbers, numbers. Actually, I'll just put numbers here. And then we'll put the stats and the team of the season together. Actually, we'll look at the stats after this. So, number. Um, so, Cristiano Ronaldo scored his very first Europa League goal in Manchester United's 2-0 win against Sheriff in the group stage. The Portuguese forward's only previous appearance in the competition at Conference Sporting back in the 2003-2003 UEFA Cup. Roma have reached as many UEFA club competitions finals the two, past two years as the rest of their history. 1984 European Cup, 1991 Europa, U UEFA Cup. Three players recorded hat tricks in 2020 2023 Europa League Vitinha, Kevin Vollen, and Angel Di Maria. There were a record number of penalty shoots, shootouts and knock around playoffs. Leverkusen beat Monaco. Shakhtar overcame Rennes while in the round of 16 sporting Stan Arsenal before Sevilla's final trump against Arsenal. So we had four penalty shootouts. Jeez. Roma lost four matches and routes to the Europa League final, all by a single goal against Lodogrets, Betis, Salzburg, and Feyenoord. Union Berlin recovered from losing their opening two games with a record equally run of five clean sheets. All six of German side's group games ended 1 0. Feyenoord twice equaled the biggest margin of victory for a Europa League game, beating Stromgaz 6 0 in the group stage and Schachter 7 1 in the round of 16. For a 6 6 season, Manchester United's European ambitions were ended by a Spanish opposition. Sevilla was sponsored for half, and 17 18, 19 20, and again, 2020, 2023. Union SG's Victor Boniface and Manchester United's forwards and Mar Marcus Rashford were the competition's joint top scores in 2020 2023. Their hauls of six goals would have not taken their prize in any other Europa League campaign. Interesting. Sevilla made its seven wins in Europa, Europa League finals and semifinals. Sevilla have not lost at home to a non Spanish opposition in the Europa League qualifying, including 12 years since eventual winners Porto edged them out and, and away goals as a 10 2011 round of 32. Dang. Hezus Navas appeared in his fourth final victory 17 years after his first. The wing back has featured in four Sevilla's triumphs. Only um, Jose Anthony Reyes with five has played in more final wins. Ferenc Varus won their group to become the first Hungarian team to reach the Europa League last 16. Hungary are the 24th nation to be represented at the stage. Real Betis winger Hokin uh, sets new marks this season as the Europa League's oldest goal scorer and oldest outfield player. Uh, 62 years and 78 days, Mendebler becomes the Europa League's oldest winning coach, beating the previous record by hold by Maurizio Sarri. Rui Patricio Ramos, goalkeeper, goalkeeper for 14 of the 15 games, has played a record of 69 games in the Europa League era. 
and the Europa League attendance record was smashed for Barca 2 to draw with Manchester United at the camp now in the knock around playoffs. Okay, so now let's go look at the stats, guys. Let's look at the stats from the Europa League Wikipedia page. Um, oh, sorry. Jeez, I keep making mistakes here. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and do this. So let me go ahead and pull this up for you guys. So um, let me go ahead and get it right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go to Europa League. Um, uh, Europa League right here. And then we're going to look at the stats right here. Um, so where are we at? Okay, here we go. This is it. So don't worry, guys. The Wikipedia page, there's no copyright, thankfully. So <laughs> I don't have to worry about that here. Um, so... Yeah, da, 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 where is it? 2020, 2023 Europa League season. Okay, let's go look at this. Let's look at this, guys. So, let's go look at the statistics. That's what we came here for, right? So, as you guys can see, Marcus Rasher, Victor Boniface with six goals. We already read that. Santiago Jimenez and Paul Dabo with five. Vitinha Ben Yedder, and we use him in Nazario Conoche and um, Pellegrino with four goals. Top assist, Evander. Evander gets a top assist with five assists. Shout out to him, man. Bakdichas. Probably butchering his name. Bakisetas. There we go. Lopezon, Fernandez, Abraham, Pellegrini, four. And those are the guys with assist. I'm not going to read all the three assists there. Team of the season. Um, we're going to get to that in a bit. But yeah, anyways, where's the clean sheets? Where is that clean sheets here? Clean sheets is not here. That is surprising. They should be here. Um, I believe it's Rui Patricio, though. So, I mean, we could just check in the foot mob. I don't want to go to the Europa League side again because they're going to go with the copyright. So, let's just go to the Europa League here in the side. Da -da 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 -da. Where is the Europa League? Why isn't it showing up? Here we go. Um, Europa League right here. It's just show. Come on, man. Europa League. Why? Where is the Europa League? Oh, here it is. Stats. All right, here is a sa a s wait. Pellegrini got the top assist. What? It says here, um, Evander got five assists. Okay, that's strange. Pellegrini's got the most goals and assist. Okay, foot mob rating got the highest foot mob rating. Nielsen got the goals per ninety expected goals. Okay, I just want to look at the a clean sheets thing. Where is the clean sheets? Uh, penalties one. Okay, I want to look at the clean sheets though. That's the thing I care most about. There we go. Patricio's got the most clean sheets with six clean sheets, guys. David De Gea with five and Ru Alex Romero with five. Okay. Saves for 90. LaFont. Okay. Okay. Now let's go, go back to the team of the thing. Okay, guys. So now let's go look back on the slides and here we are. So we're going to go ahead and continue, guys. We're going to continue here. Okay. Now we have team of the season. So, guys, as you guys can see, I've done – there's two team of the seasons. I'm going to go over both of them. So this is the one I came up with, guys. On the left is the one I did, and on the right is the one that U UEFA did. Oh, crap. This is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to move my webcam. Um, bear with me, you guys. Sorry. Ah, uh, here we go. This is what I wanted to do. So let's go look at both real quick. Let's start with the Europa one. Let's go with the one they chose. So they put Bono in goal. That's a fair choice. I didn't put Bono in mine because I feel like he didn't get the most clean sheets, but I can understand why you would put. So if you if you couldn't put Patricio, I'll put him for sure. Um, Acuna is a good shout. I agree with it. Um, I did go with Chris Smalling and Jonathan Ta. I did go with those two. And I actually went with Fring Pong at the right back. Um, Jesus Nava, so I can understand why they did it. You know, he won the Europa League, so, you know, got the player of the season award as well. So, yeah. And then for my midfield, I went with Matic in the CDM position. I think that's a fair choice. Uh, Rakitic, I put him in there. And then I actually put down Florian Wartz. I put Florian Wartz in there. Um, he was a young player of the season, so I feel like you have to put him in there. I'm not really sure why UEFA didn't, because he's the young player of the season, so he should be in the 11. And then for the front three, I put Rashford in the mid uh, left. I put Ty Bella at the striker position, and I put Di Marie. I didn't put Boniface because I really wanted to, but I feel like you have to put Ty Bella because he made the Europa League final and scored in it um, despite losing. So, And I put Di Maria there because I needed a right winger, and I couldn't really find any other great right wingers, so... You know, I didn't really want to put Dybella out on the right. I just felt like that would be odd. So, I just decided to go with that. So, you know, I just didn't really um, agree with. But most of the, like I said, most of the team of the season I agree with, to be fair. So, that is, um, you know, up for debate. So, let me know your team of the seasons in the comments below. Okay, now we move on to the final thing, I think. Yep, now it's a quiz. This is a quiz. Now, I believe there is no copyright. So, I don't think I'm, I should be worried about this. So, hopefully there is no copyright. Please don't play any videos or anything like that. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and check it out. So this is the quiz part, guys. This is the final bit of today's video. So yeah, I know it's a very long video, guys. I know it's a wrong video. So um, oh yeah, and I'm gonna give you guys my Europa League final rating after this. So we should also do that too. Okay, take the quiz. Okay, let's go ahead and do this, guys. I haven't done the quiz yet, so we got 17 questions. Okay, guys. So Sevilla beat Juventus last four to reach the seventh final, but how many semifinals ties have they lost? Um, I believe it's zero, right? Yep, that is correct. It is zero. Okay. Which of the teams has Jose Mourinho not guided to a UEFA Cup slash Europa League final? Inter, Man United, Porto, Roma. Um, wait, hold. Hasn't he done with all four? Oh, it's Inter. I think it's Inter, guys. I think it's Inter. Yes, yes, because he won the Champions League with Inter. All the other teams he won the Europa, well, got to the final with. I was going to say he won the Europa League, but obviously we know he didn't win the Europa League with Roma. Um, four penalty shootouts. We just read that. Um, so correct there. Okay. Man has a 1-0 loss to Real City match day one. It was the first home defeat in how many Europa League home games? Okay, now this I don't know. So I'm going to have to make a wild guess here. I'm going to go with um, 14. Ah, uh, it was 19. Dang. 19, okay. Who scored a first half trap trick for Braga in the 3-3 draw with Union? Okay, that I know. It's Vitinha. It's Vitinha. Um, yeah, Vitinha. Okay. Right record at Alejandro Garnacho break when he became Man United's youngest non-English goal scorer in Europe. Football match day six. Uh, who did he break the record? I'm guessing it was Ronaldo. It, it probably is, right? Oh, George Best, actually. Okay. How many seconds did it take Paolo Debo to find the net after coming off the bench to score as Roma beat HJK on match day two? Uh, I don't know this. <laughs> I don't know this. I forgot. Um, I'm going to guess 48. <laughs> if I got this one right, I'll be surprised. 68. Okay. Your game becomes the oldest. Okay, I think I read this somewhere. We were just reading this. I kind of hovered over this. I don't think I read this part. Is it for, it's 40, I think that's 41. Yeah, it says 41. Okay, thank you. I got that one right. What does team did not win the Europa League group? Okay, so Batiste, Ferenc Varos, Roma. It's Roma. Roma didn't win the Europa League group. That's easy. Okay, um, what was special about Cristiano's record penalty against Sheriff on match day two? Uh, it was his first Europa League goal. Yep. How many points separated Feyenoord and fourth place Storm Graz? That is zero. All of them finished on the same points. Crazy, man. Crazy. Uh, there was a record e equaling eight goals in Feyenoord's home win. Okay, this is easy. It was 7-1. 7-1, <laughs> man. I, I know that score very well. <laughs> Probably too well. Okay, uh, Renz Zardoi at 17 years and 125 days become became the third youngest player to score a Europa League goal match day three. Who is the youngest? Uh, I wow. Hold up, is that all Belgian players? <laughs> Jeez, that's all Belgian players. Um, my guess, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real. I don't know. I don't think it's Telemans. I I I have a feeling it's not Telemans. I'm gonna go with KDB. I'm going to go with KDB. Ah, it was Lukaku. Okay, okay whatever. Union St. Galas was only promoted back to Belgium top flight in 2020. How many, how many years have they been away? Uh, I think it's 18? I don't know, actually. 48 years? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Eight teams transferred to the competition with the Champions League ahead of the knockout round playoffs. How many were still standing going into the quarterfinals? Okay, I gotta think this through, guys. I gotta think this through. So, let me think this through. So, Ajax didn't make the quarters. So, I'm gonna rule them out. So, I'm gonna write this down. So, Ajax didn't. Okay, I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna write this down. So, Ajax didn't. Um, Group B, who came from Group B? That was, I think, um... Leverkusen. Leverkusen did, so, yeah. Uh, Barca didn't. Um, so, no. Group D, I think that was the sp uh, Sporting. Sporting, yes. Yeah, sporting did make it. So, yeah. Sporting did, yes. So, two. Um, okay. Group E, that was the... Um, I'm trying to remember these groups at the top of my head, guys. Group E, I think that was... Um, I don't remember actually now. I'm thinking about it. Group E. Oh, that was a Chelsea group. Chelsea, Chelsea group, I think. 
Yeah, Chelsea group. Um, I believe that was Salzburg. Salzburg didn't. So, no. Uh, and then Leipzig group. Real Madrid's group. That was, um, I believe, Shakhtar. Shakhtar didn't. Um, and then group G was the Sevilla group. And Sevilla did. Well, Man City group, sorry to say. Sevilla did. And group H was Ferenc Varos. And they didn't. So, I believe that is three. Yeah, that's three, I think. Yeah, that's three. Okay, so three. Should be three. What? Oh. Oh, I miscount. Oh, I've, oh, wait. Hold up. I forgot to do group. Oh, that was Juventus. Oh, my idiot. I. What was I thinking? I was thinking the Europa League group. Okay, sorry. I should have known. It's it's four. Yeah, that was stupid on my part. Okay. Um, Whose record? Yeah, we read this. It was Moritz. Moritz, you sorry. Okay. At last question we have is Sevilla. Okay, now it's seven. This is easy. This is easy. Okay. I got 11 out of 17. So, um, if we do some quick math, what is... That's... Uh, that's a bit... I think that's a bit more than half. Oh, come on. My numb lock. So, yeah. That's 64%. Okay, 64%. Okay, you know what? Eh, that's not the best. I'm not really too happy, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah, we, we really should have got 12 because I should have... I don't know why I messed up with the Juventus thing, but... I guess my brain wasn't thinking right. Okay, so now I'm going to give you guys my overall rating of this Europa League. Overall rating. I'm going to give this Europa League, guys, an 8 out of 10. I thought this Europa League was pretty, pretty good. Um, You know, we had some end-to-end -end stuff. You know, maybe I might give it a 9. I'm not going to give it a 10 because I felt like we needed... I feel like there was too many Champions League teams that progressed. Um, So, like, I feel like we didn't get that much... Actually, you know what? Maybe I give it a 10. Actually, no, I'm not going to give it a 10 because we still had a same old winner. I, if Maybe if we had a new winner, if Romo win it, I would have given it a 10, but I'm going to give it a 9. I'm going to give it a 9. 9 is still pretty good, though. But, yeah, um, that's going to pretty much be it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this very, very long video. Uh, like I said, guys, please like this video if you did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you're new on here, guys. Comment below your thoughts. Comment section below, guys. And, yeah, consider becoming a member of the channel, guys. Click that join button, guys. Uh, make sure you guys also um, uh, check out my email in the description below. Turn on the notification bell to me now if I want to go live. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.